Yes, good morning. <coughs> I'm happy to see that uh, so many of you are awake and here. <laughs> but uh, I'll also warn you, this will not take half an hour. So if you plan to read your mail, uh, you could just focus 10 minutes on this and then you have a chance to read your mail afterwards. So <laughs> just for fun. Um, uh, after I have seen a lot of uh, very nice things the last uh, few days, uh, I'm a bit uh, modest doing this because uh, we really do not have those large platforms that can do anything. But uh, I have tried to grab together what we have in Denmark about the Danish newspapers and uh, that's what I'm going to tell you. So I made a short outline that we talk about the Danish digitized uh, newspapers. Then uh, we have uh, what we call Statsbibliothek. They have, are starting up a lab uh, to work with the very large collection. And then I'll say something about the Clarion DK toolbox and a bit about the uh, plans and visions of how we want to continue the work. So just a few words about the national landscape in Denmark. We have this kind of national collaborative project or initiative that we call Dikum Lab that has six partners. And uh, this is a kind of uh, all people that could work with digital humanities in Denmark, that's uh, these six uh, partners. Um, it's just that uh, the University of Copenhagen is a kind of clearing node and the University of Aarhus is a barrier node. And it's a kind of umbrella project. So, so uh, working together in, on a national level uh, is of course done in this kind of uh, umbrella project, but uh, we have, uh, have uh, to work uh, hard to, to cross the, the borders of the institutions when we want to do something. But we are working on that here. And uh, then we have this kind of uh, strange uh, arrangement that we have uh, two national libraries and they are now merging bec uh, and uh, that I guess that that will uh, solve some of the problems with collaboration and make it easier to, to, to bridge things there. Uh, the, the institution called Statsbibliothek has a responsibility of re preserving the old newspapers and uh, that's what we're going to hear a bit more about. In, in Denmark, newspapers, those that are still alive and uh, publishing the newspapers still, they are doing the kind of archiving themselves now. But of course, um, we have a lot of old pa papers that's not there anymore. And, um, and, and we have got a kind of uh, collection overview. You can see I've put in some links so you can go back to if you want. Uh, Danske Avisa, there's a, li a list of what's really the, 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 the um, the way things, uh, how, which uh, newspapers there were there, and um, and also some of the what's called Norjuske, they made their own archive of their ten newspapers. That most of them is not really there anymore. There's also some indexes uh, where you can see that there's somebody has been working with special collections of the newspapers and made article indexes, but they those indexes are just metadata, you would say about uh, some of the, the selections of articles that people found interesting in special periods of the time. At MediaStream, at SESB in particular, we have this project MediaStream, and they have collected uh, 24 million pages yet, and they have uh, from uh, OCR, the old microfilm, and, and then ha have uh, made them searchable. And uh, you could uh, see a list on that. And uh, I'm sorry, but because the, the interface is Danish, because they thought that they did not need an English interface for Danish newspapers. And you could argue that, but I guess that you will get most of it. So, uh, so currently they have uh, been uh, OCRing uh, 24 million pages, and the budget is for the project is to reach 32 million. And, and here you can, you can search on it, and then you have a small kind of uh, uh, tick box here. You, you can search in what you have the rights to see, and that's a smart thing because then you do not uh, get a lot of stuff that you do not uh, have a chance to go into. But of course, you could also use it just to see what they have digitized. 
the State Library has just started up something that they call the, the, uh, the State Speed Boutique Labs. And uh, I, I would say that this is experimental and it's a beta version. And if you try it out, uh, you, you could, of course. But uh, don't blame them for minor errors if you see them, because it's a beta and they are just promoting it through the institutions to have the rights to, to do some advertisement for it. So it's, it's still in a kind of unreleased version, although it's public available. But yeah. So, uh, so the, 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 the SB Labs, they seek to find new ways to combine this kind of, uh, the, the, all the information they have in the, um, in the newspapers to, to, and, and put some uh, tools uh, up on that. And what they have running now only is some kind of thing, simple thing. And just to connect to um, Cis's uh, talk yesterday, if you go in and search after this, uh, the name of this town, Grinsted, where Sissel had all her work done, it, you can see during the years when, when Grinsted is really a much more mentioned uh, uh, name in, in the whole collection than before. And, um, and then you, you could also search for other words, and then you have the chance to see when things are going uh, uh, up and on in other terms. And here I, I search for this uh, kind of uh, railway town thing, Stationsby, and you can see that the, 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 this kind of um, concept is, is a bit earlier than Grinsted in, in the newspapers. But, uh, but it, then, uh, so you can see how when Grinsted is peaking, even though that Cecil has written and uh, read all those links uh, all those uh, articles that were in different papers. So it's not in, in here. We can see that even this is the more general papers that, that's collected, um, uh, newspapers that's collected. Th then we can also see a kind of peak here for when Grinsted really g gets a community. And uh, then you also have the chance to go in here and see how exactly on the graph, how many articles there will be for uh, mentioning uh, the, the different words. And, uh, and uh, now you see that the real peak that we could be interested in is 1918, or that's the first peak. And uh, of course, but the, the material is not available, so I just made the search for 2000, uh, 1916, because that was available, just to make sure that you did not get the same page as Sizzle yesterday with that there was no access to any data. But then you can, from this graph, you can go in directly to search the material, and, uh, and you can go into details about your search if you like to. And you could also see the, the page where you, it will be highlighted, where you have the, the, the words you have been searching for. And of course, you can see that here in this, it's just a small adverb about that you can rent a shop and you should go to the, uh, the pharmacy to, to get the, the, the seed, to, to have the chance to see it and so. So it's really not an, a nice article how things are, but it's kind of a mention only the, the town here. Yeah, so uh, all this material we are discussing with uh, the uh, Stats Bibliothek, if we from the university could try to ap apply some tools to them so they could do lemmatization and part of speech tagging, so you could do much more interesting uh, and broad search uh, in the material. But that's only plans. Yeah, and, and then the other thing we, we have now is the Clarion uh, the DK toolbox. And uh, that's just a kind, you could say, standard tools that we have wrapped as web services, so they are easily easy to interface to. Mm -hmm. And then we have created a workflow manager that makes these, it easier to chain these tools in a way that you can use without knowing a lot of uh, natural language processing. And uh, what you get now is kind of segmentation and annotation tools, uh, just a standard NLP thing, almost. And we can also offer some corpus search. Um, and then we have integrated some of our tools with the lang Clarion language switchboard that uh, Menzo mentioned uh, Monday. So, so we try to broaden the use of it. And, uh, and you say, OK, yeah, that's the old story. They have something. Yeah, but they, we have heard that before, but, um, and, and you have, some of you. 
But I'll just say that we have thought that now there might be some, like CISL, that has some PDF files that they want to have converted to, to, to text. And then we have made this kind of easy uh, to convert toolbox thing that will you could upload your PDFs and you can have it uh, uh, converted to text and format it in a way that the tools can easily get uh, access as input. And um, and then we also have had this toolbox thing where you easily go in and say, I want to have a frequency list, or I want to get entities, uh, named entities, and, and then the toolbox will suggest you a kind of workflow that you can use, and, uh, and uh, if you want to choose yourself, you can do that. Otherwise, the toolbox will suggest something that you can uh, use for it. And you don't know to ha you don't have to have this very detailed knowledge of the NLP tools to use them, but afterwards, when you have used the tools, you will get a, a, a mail with an information package, so you can always see which tools did I use, what's the versions of them, what, what uh, resources did I apply for this, and so. So you get a full documentation, and also the metadata you would need if you are going to refer to it later on. Yeah, so, and then this uh, just as uh, something about our plans and hopes for the future. We, we like to, to work a little bit more with uh, this way of having a kind of standardized way to make it uh, possible for the researchers to do their own personalized uh, annotations. So, so we are working to how to we could define a kind of format where we can offer people to do the kind of annotations they want to uh, provide especially for their material because uh, it, it's really uh, for each research question you would like to uh, mark something new. So now we are trying to model this kind of uh, format so, so we, we can reuse it for different purposes uh, when, the, when a researcher comes and says, oh, but I want to mark uh, only the female uh, temper or something in, in the in in some kind of text, you could go in and use the, the standard format and then we could offer you some kind of standard uh, visualization or search results and tools that works on it and you can have it documented and saved in our archive. Yeah, and, and uh, it's also because we have not uh, very much uh, resources so we can uh, not uh, do really nice complete uh, text analytics uh, interface things at our site. But we think that if we could do some kind of uh, helping things that could offer you formats where you could express your, uh, your annotations and so, we will be able to also fit in some of the tools we have so we can easily configure them for other use cases. And uh, we have also been working with some timeline <laughs> selections of data before because we really understand that that's important. And uh, then we also uh, have this kind of uh, uh, visualization of the places, place names. Uh, we want to uh, elaborate uh, even more so we could easily show to you on maps what kind of annotations you uh, have. Yeah, and then of course, Collaboration is uh, the key issue for us because we are some developers in a team and, and we need the research questions from the researchers and we want to bridge this gap and try to, to help people with the problems they have and uh, the data they want to work with. Yeah, that's all for me. So I just mentioned that this work is done together with Mitchell and Bart and Dorder from the University of Copenhagen and if you have any questions about the Smurf thing then contact the uh, stats bibliotheca. Okay? Okay, thanks. Um, thank you. That gives us plenty of time for, uh, for questions, uh, comments, yeah. discussion. Yeah. Yes. I just um, uh, one meteorological remark. There are two towns called Grenstel. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> and that because I just looked at it because I was uh, and uh, But the next thing was that um, uh, the toolbox. I might be one of the users of this yeah. toolbox where you can convert a PDF. Yeah. Yeah. 
That means, in principle, I could convert my uh, um, iPhone photos to a text and put it directly into. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know what the quality would be, but we will do some experiments. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, the idea is that this is the infrastructure for collaborative work. Yeah. And it, does, uh, uh, I, I just uh, have a proposal to make a little film so that I could tell them in Grenste that if you have photos, then it's very easy. Yeah. Because uh, this is really a, a, a collaborative thing, and uh, which has to be... Um, uh. Yeah, and and one comment about this with Grenstel, we are working together with people that has a very um, uh, a very knowledge about about the the place names in Denmark. So so and also th that's why we work with this kind of visualizing the place names, be because we want to be able to to uh, to notify that you go to the right place. And I thought Grinstead was the only one, but uh, there's other towns where you have the same name all over the place. <laughs> and that's really a mess. So you cannot know if it's from there unless you kind of resolve that this newspaper would, in small things, uh, write about this t town that's nearby. But if it's a large article, it could be a town somewhere else and so. But, but we, we want this collaboration with the people who work with the place names in Denmark to try to qualify uh, it. Uh, yeah, I was busy on my laptop while you were talking, not answering mails, but going to the sites which you mentioned. And um, yeah. I have a simple question about, uh, about access, because um, most of the things I tried, they tell me, OK, you have to go to Denmark, go to the Royal Library, and then you can access uh, the stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's one question. The other question is where the Smurf comes from. In, in, in Dutch, a Smurf has a very <laughs> specific connotation. Yeah, I'm sorry for that. I, I, I did not ask them. <laughs> and I, I hope nobody would ask me. <laughs> I, I, they, they have invented it and, and, and I say that, that's also why I say it's experimental, because I guess it might change its name, I don't know, <laughs> when it has to be approved in, uh, in the direction uh, or in the management of the, of the State Library. <laughs> so, so Please go into the, the, the main page and see if it's uh, changed. So I cannot answer that one. About the rights, uh, we have this that uh, if it's before 1916, yeah, then you, you, you will have the rights to search the, the pages. And if it's after, you will have to go to specific places. And that's, that's a mess. Yeah. Um, I think we cannot uh, change that. If you want to use the Clarion toolbox and so, uh, you, you can log in with your uh, federated identity from your university and that should work. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a funny thing when you have such a kind of platform that you allow people to work in, uh, then, then there might sometimes be some occasions where things are not working. So please tell us instead of telling the neighbor that it's not working, then write <laughs> me and <laughs> say it's not working today, why? Because last yesterday we also had some problems, but yeah, let's know. Well, first, I wanted to ask for the link to the toolbox. I couldn't couldn't find. Okay, the, yeah. Um, and I was wondering, um, once you have paid for um, encoding a certain, you know, using the toolbox, can they also give it back or share it somehow? Uh, I don't mean the, the very personalized annotation schemas, but the, the ones in, you know, using your own toolbox. Yeah, the, 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 the outcome of when you apply the toolbox is in the format so you can uh, uh, archive it at, at, uh, at Clarion DK. Mm -hmm. so, so, so you can, uh, it, it will show up in formats that's uh, usable together with the other tools. And, and if you want to go to the toolbox, the, the easiest way is to go to clarin.dk and then you'll get a, a front page where there's a kind of uh, uh, wheel where, you, where the, it's a, the toolbox. And the interface should be in English, <laughs> so you can, ch you can switch it to, to the English language. And if you discover things that are not translated, tell us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've got one more question. 
I'd like to ask you whether you uh, tried your um, NLP tools on the older versions of the newspapers, like 1916 or even uh, older ones. Uh, for example, the part of speech tagging, climatization, yeah. and whatever, and what the results are. I mean, did you do some evaluation how it works? Currently, we are we are developing a tagger for the 1800 and the late 1800 and the early 1900 stuff. Uh, because we want, we know that that's a, a terrible mess, and, and then we also have the material to do a training of, of the, the even older stuff, and and then we will have to see how much interest and and how uh, how interesting it is for people to work with that before 1880, but then we I, we will yeah adapt the tools to 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 work there. We we have uh, yeah a lot of data, so we have a chance to do it. It's just that if nobody asks for it, we'll not do it. Oh. Okay. Um, okay. Talk, thank you again to Lena.